we're going to get started. Uh, so welcome everybody to the OpenGov Hack Night. Uh, this is the 134th uh, OpenGov Hack Night. We've been doing this for about uh, two and a half, almost three years now. Uh, so uh, I usually do this later, but right now I'll do it. How many of you raise your hands if this is your first hack night? All right, welcome to the new folks. Thanks for coming. Um, so those, for those of you who are new, uh, I'm actually pretty curious about how you heard about this event. Did anybody want to want to volunteer? How'd you hear about this? Uh, my friend invited me. Hey, cool. And then you know about this thing, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, awesome. Well, so uh, this is a weekly event for people to talk about open data and civic tech uh, here in Chicago. Uh, and we're going to have a pretty awesome presentation tonight uh, about the Hour of Code, which is uh, something that you guys potentially could get involved with uh, volunteering for. Um, so we'll... Cell phone silence, please, Rose. <laughs> uh, but before we get to that, we'd like to do a couple of uh, things on the agenda. One is probably the most important one, my favorite, which is uh, everyone goes around the room and just introduces themselves. Uh, after we do that, we'll have an open floor for announcements, so anybody can um, share if you have an event or some sort of news or some sort of um, app or anything that's sort of civic tech or open data rela related you'd like to share with this group. You're welcome to, to do that. Anybody can sort of just uh, chime in and say whatever they want. Uh, and then after that, we'll get to our presentation. And then after that, we'll do the civic hacking portion of the evening, uh, which we'll give you guys more details on uh, in a bit. Um, anything else before we get started? I think we're good. Okay, cool. So I'll start with the introductions, and then we'll just kind of kind of go around the room. Uh, so I'm Derek Eater. I'm an open data web developer and a partner at Datamate here in Chicago. I work out of 1871 here. I uh, started this event about, uh, you know, like I said, two and a half years ago, and I like to make stuff with open data. Hi, my name is Christopher Whitaker. I'm a civic technology consultant here in Chicago and the Code for America Brigade Captain for Chicago. Hi everybody, my name is Rosa Frie, and I am the, uh, the lead on the social service delivery group here uh, for Hack Night. And I'm also the project manager of M Relief. It's an app that helps people figure out whether they qualify for social services. Hi guys, uh, my name is Alex Sobel. I used to work at Chicago Public Schools, so Jamal, I don't know where you are, but we were once co-workers. <laughs> and um, now I'm involved with Code for America. I'm Rob Van Ness, I'm a policy fellow in Mayor's office. I'm Claire Nicklin, I'm an interaction designer at the University of Chicago. John no, Aaron Rothenberg, I'm just uh, interested in the data. I'm Jane Small, I'm interested in the data. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of go around? Go ahead. Nick. Adam Heckman, I'm Microsoft's Director of Technology and Civic Innovation, and we're also hosting um, an hour code event at the White House. Uh, Richard, Richard Harris, uh, I'm a data scientist at Braintree, which is four floors down from here, and used to work at the University of Chicago Crime Lab. I'm Quinn Mahomes, I'm a budget analyst at the city, and the city of Chicago, and I'm interested in the data as well. I'm Jamil Cornelius, you'll hear more from me a little bit later, but I work with Chicago Public Schools, and I actually met Alex two years ago when I was working here in 1871. For citizen school, a long time ago. Oh. So I've been <laughs> for a while, but shamefully, this is my first. Uh, I'm Alex Khan. I'm a web developer slash data scientist, and I'm interested in making stuff. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm a sysadmin, and I work on a project to find a new code. I'm Jeff Berg. I am a uh, computation lead in positive energy, which is the engineering firm of uh, Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill. I'm looking for JavaScript developers, statisticians, and backend developers. So if you are any of those, please come see me. And you're a Lenny Award winner. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Emily Mooney. I'm a writer, um, a content marketing strategist, and a Lenny um, I'm Josh Kalov, an open data consultant. Um, I do work with Cook County government on their open data, and I'm also a facilitator for the education breakout group. Cool. Uh, I'm Nick Vader, I'm a senior researcher at Chapman Hall at the University of Chicago. A lot of work in child and family welfare um, policy. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, coding and R. Uh, I'm Brian, I'm an application support analyst at Lowe's Entertainment. Uh, my name is Matt Hampel. Uh, I'm a co-founder of a company called Local Data that helps cities and institutions collect place-based data and was a 2012 Code for America fellow in Detroit. 
Uh, I'm Matt. I'm a production engineer at a software company, sometimes journalist, and I'm going to team in about two minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Declan. I'm a developer at a company called Triple Binder. We make apps for connecting people with social services. My name is David Flood. I'm with the uh, Climate Corporation. I'm a strategic account manager there. We, we actually take open data um, and build platforms for farmers. Dave hey, Belusky, Java architect with the STA group. I love uh, data and co-ops and civics. Hi, I'm Scott. Uh, I'm a software developer. Uh, I'm interested uh, in urban sustainability especially, and I facilitate the uh, environmental breakout group. Uh, I'm Aaron Miller. I'm a software engineer with Siemens Healthcare. Hey everyone, I'm Kathy Day. Um, I work at Datamate here in 1871, and I'm a big fan of web and tech literacy. Uh, my name is Manny Nelson. I'm a full stack developer. I work for One Health Interactive. My name is Richard Bingham. I recently moved back to Asia where I was working in development for both Vietnam and India, and now I'm looking for a job. Uh, I'm Gino Bernardi, and I'm really interested in city transportation. Martin, I work on work on transportation planning for CMAP. I'm Dennis Rorty, I'm a um, developer and also a Cool. Is that everybody? Okay, great. Um, so moving on, uh, we'll have an uh, open floor for announcements. So if anybody has any stuff they would like to share with this uh, group of awesome people, now is your chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. All right. I mean, uh, um, nothing big. Uh, new commissioners were sworn in yesterday for Cook County. So we have updated um, commissioner information and also uh, new commissioner district boundaries went into effect too. So <laughs> the new and old boundaries are up on Cook County's mm -hmm. portal. And this is the Cook County Board of Commissioners, right? So there's yeah. 13 of those? Uh, 17. 17, okay. Um, and just like the wards got redrawn, which happens every 10 years or so based on like census data, they do the same thing for Cook County. Did you know Cook County also breaks everything up into like ward-like districts? Um, you may not know that. Um, cool. Uh, any other uh, announcements? Is this one or is this? Uh, I, no. Oh, okay. I just, I, I, um, Rose, what's up? Okay, mine is a, a small announcement. Okay, I'll stand up. Um, Emily is looking for interns. So um, we're looking for two interns. One, a JavaScript intern. And it's really lightweight, 10 hours a week. Um, and <coughs> a policy and operations intern. So someone who can help with sort of our like internal data management. So uh, just uh, hit me up if you know anyone uh, that might be interested in helping out. Start your web. Hmm? Starting now? Uh, yeah, starting now. We're interviewing. It's kind of going to be on an ongoing basis, but we hope to really, really fully get started January 1st. Thanks, Rose. Anybody else? What's up, man? Oh, you can go Oh, go ahead, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Can you click on? Click on ah. Oh, sorry. We want me to click on. <laughs> this thing? Yeah. So people can know. Uh, <laughs> this one right here? Um, so last week I started a community blog for Hack Night called Civic Tech Voices. Um, and we have our first post. And it's an intro to web scraping. And it's a pretty good intro <coughs> level tutorial if you're new to coding. Um, so you should check that out. And also, this isn't necessarily going to be just like a technology blog. So if you have any ideas or posts, like stories or general skill sharing, you should email me. <coughs> post it. Cool. What's the, the theme of the book? Uh, civic tech things. <laughs> I think it's people that come to this event. Yeah. And it's probably it's technology, but also just civics in general. Like anything, I guess you could see yourself having a conversation here about anybody uh, with anybody here. That's probably appropriate for this. Book. Yeah, and also something that's just like a little less for announcements, but more for like maybe discussing or sharing thoughts. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, other, sorry, you had one. What's up, James? Uh, in, this is a, in January, uh, I'm going to start going through the Andrew NG, whatever, his machine learning course on Coursera. And I'm trying to put together a little group of us to go all through it together. We'll be doing R and Python, or one or the other. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let me know so I can get a head count. Awesome. Thanks. 
Scott's up. Yeah, uh, so next Monday I'm going to be uh, teaching uh, Intro to Web Development for General Assembly. Uh, it's here, you could go sign up on the General Assembly website. And as an added bonus, we're going to uh, build a, a website uh, in the class uh, using data from uh, the city of Chicago's Open Data Portal. Woohoo, nice. Spread the gospel, man. What's that? Spread the gospel. Right. <laughs> Uh, where do they get to it from this? Uh, Chicago. Uh, so a campus? Uh, classes and workshops. Um, actually, would you mind just posting it to sure. the Google group? So we also, just so you guys know, um, what I was clicking on earlier was we have a Google group for this particular event. So uh, if you, it's linked to on the Open Gov Hack Night website, um, and you can find it there, or it's just the Chai Hack Night Google group. If you just Google that, you'll find it. Sure. Um, yeah, and there's about 350 people or so on the list, so it's like a pretty decent following now. And it's a place for just sharing announcements and just talking to people in this community. Uh, other announcements? Is that? An hour after. Oh, for what? For yeah. your oh, for your breakout group? Oh, let's do it for the breakout okay. groups. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Uh, I have two actually, if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so wait, not this one. Uh, yeah, this one. So uh, if you are on the uh, list, uh, the Google group, um, there's been a recent development with uh, a piece of legislation going through the Illinois uh, House and Senate. So back, I think I want to say in like April, uh, the, there was a FOIA bill that was um, put forward that was sort of uh, described as a reform bill for FOIA law. Um, but actually what it does is it, it introduces a bunch of changes to FOIA law that actually makes it harder to get uh, records from the government. And so the governor actually vetoed it, but we are happen to be in the veto session now for the Illinois Senate and the Illinois uh, State uh, House. And they, the House actually, I believe a week and a half ago, voted to override the governor's veto and it was moved on to the Senate. And I believe they're voting on it tomorrow. So it sounds like there's a high likelihood that this bill will pass, uh, which is a big bummer. Um, so uh, I've been trying to kind of keep tabs on this, the, these developments. There's a thread on here um, about it. And the most recent one is that um, there actually has been uh, quite a bit more um, press about this particular, um, uh, this particular bill as it moves through the Senate. So the State Journal Register, the Better Government Association, and Progress Illinois have all come out to vote, like to say that this is a bad thing and people should vote against it. Um, so I'm just trying to do what I can to try to like leverage this community's uh, power to just do what everybody else does and call your representative. Uh, I'm also interested in thinking about other ways that we can actually use technology to improve that engagement. Calling is a thing you can do, right? Anybody can do it. I have no idea how effective it is. I don't know. I don't know anybody who knows how effective it could be. Um, so I'd love to know if anybody has any like, contacts in one of these offices to like. How do they actually go through the process of like? If I call, what does that mean? Like, does that go into some system? How does that actually get tracked by the our elected representatives? I have no idea. Um, so I'd like to learn more about that. Because um, one thought I had was like, well, we also use like Twitter a lot in this group. Would it be possible to leverage some sort of tools to make it easier to tweet at your representatives? Is that more effective than calling? It seems like it's a, certainly a lot more public, mm -hmm. and there's a p potential for people to like retweet those things, and then you can kind of maybe build a bigger uh, sort of snowball effect to get more people aware of an issue. <coughs> maybe it's much more. Uh, could potentially be much more effective than just calling, one person calling. So uh, if anybody is interested in all in like talking about this or thinking about ideas, um, it's something that uh, I'm pretty interested in. So um, it's something I think it could be a good thing to focus on. Obviously, tomorrow is like <laughs> pretty good. <time. laughs> but you know, this is something that's like potentially going to be a, a tool that could be useful anytime there's legislation, right? So uh, that we want to sort of be uh, active on. So I think uh, it's something that we could start thinking about tools now. Yeah. I may have a path for some of that information okay. you're looking for. So cool. Let's talk. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah. So there will be breakout groups later. We've mentioned that before. So if anybody wants to talk to me about some of that stuff, um, we can maybe start a little breakout group. Um, so that's my first one. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. Just a yeah. What's up, It's been my understanding at least um, that maybe calls and traditional sort of ways of communicating might be better than uh, Twitter just because 
I think it matters to a lot of uh, senators where people are coming from, and sometimes with Twitter you can't tell if, you this, can't tell. if these Correct. are your constituents. Right, because they want to know it's their constituents that care about this issue, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, I called my state representative, um, Tony Berrios, mm -hmm. and I talked, and it was like, I was like, hey, I, I think you should vote no on this thing, <laughs> and I'm from Logan Square, and right. these are the reasons, and the person was just like, oh, okay, so I'll just mark you down as a no. And then, like, she just wanted to get that, right. and like, and I also have talked to some other folks who say apparently there's these systems that a lot of elected officials use to like log constituent yeah. requests, and it's like a big database. So, if that call is just going to end up as a tally in a database anyways, why not like use technology to like leverage that so it's easier to get the tally in the database? Like, maybe that's an approach. Yeah. Maybe we could use Twilio to do tweet to call. So okay. all those tweeters can end up. Whoa! Calling. All right. See, I we have know. the power. <laughs> <laughs> right? And yeah, tomorrow. Kind of <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, 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 I just happened to notice yeah. this while you're talking about FOIA. Yeah. Uh, speaking of FOIA and speaking of CPS, um, <laughs> if you go to on CPS now, if you go to Freedom of Informa Information Act requests and go to FOIA archive, it takes forever to load, but when it eventually does, they are now posting requests and apparently posting at least some response documents on the right. I saw one. Yeah. I don't know why it's not showing up here. There you go. Yeah. So there's some. So there's uh, like seven pages worth of FOIA getting posted. Yeah. So that's interesting. Also, side note, the company that runs this service is called GovQA. Yes. And yeah, these guys right here. Um, and they are apparently like they do FOIA services for like a bunch of different governments. It was like, you know, fascinating. Um, so, sorry, I mentioned I had one more announcement and then uh, we can get to the presentation. Um, this one's more fun. So, yesterday we launched a project called Geomancer. It's got a cool name. <laughs> uh, it's a project that we did for the Associated Press and they got funding from the Knight Foundation to build a tool that can take any spreadsheet and attach geographic information to it. So the idea is, say you have a spreadsheet with a bunch of data and it's maybe got states in a column. You can then use that information about the state to go look up other information from, say, like the census and say, what's the population of that state? Or, you know, what's the median household income? And there's a bunch of different data sources that we've added to launch with. Um, so anyways, it's a free and open source tool if anybody wants to, and these are the data sets we support and the geographies we support, so like zip code, city, county, FIPS codes, which is like census IDs, um, school districts are even in there. Uh, so the idea is to like really like make it easier to get data, like mash up data, um, and this, is a, a, this idea came from the Associated Press. This is a need they actually had as a newsroom. And so they applied to get the grant, they got it, and then they hired DataMate to do it. So we launched it yesterday. Um, it's free for anybody to use. It's for journalists, but anybody I can think in this room could see uh, value in, uh, in using this thing. So check it out. Uh, again, the code's <coughs> open source. If you want to see how we did it, that's also on there too. Um, but yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys. What's that? I can't see what that slide is. Geomancer. Geomancer.io. Oh yeah. I was going to send out, I'll send, actually, I'll send out an email to the list yeah, just so great. people can see it. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. Any other uh, announcements before we get into the main event? Okay, great. Well then, Jamal, it's uh, all yours. Let's hear about the Hour of Code. Let's see if we can pull it this Yeah, sure. Um, oh, did you like, have it up? Is this your machine? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've never been called the main event before. That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Pacquiao is going to run out any time and just swipe one at me. Is this it right here? <laughs> I'll let you run the show. My name is Jamel Cornelius. I am the project manager at Chicago Public Schools for the Computer Science for All initiative. What I wanted to do is come to talk to you guys today, one, about the Computer Science for All initiative, just to let you know some of the things that we have going on at Chicago Public Schools to help develop more young people into be thinkers and creators like yourselves, and also give you a little bit more information on something that's in the very near future, which is Hour of Code. So show of hands, who in the room has heard of the Computer Science for All initiative? Got one from Microsoft, awesome. We've got two, fantastic. Three, great. So 
So I get to be the first person to tell you about it. So in December of 2013, Mayor Rahm Emanuel and Chicago Public School CEO Barbara Bird Bennett announced that they were going to launch an initiative to bring computer science education to all students in Chicago public schools. So with this, we launched a partnership with Code.org and we've developed a K-12 curriculum scope and sequence to help bring computer science education to all students in the district. One of the mandates for this program is not only to make computer science available to students, but to make it something that's necessary. We know that in the world that we live in, technology is just as important as your math and your science, your reading and your writing and everything else. It's fundamental now. Our students have never known a world without iPads and tablets, but yet they don't know how to manipulate them, how to create using them. So what we aim to do is level the playing field and help our students in these public schools get the opportunities that other students are paying thousands of dollars in private schools to do. So with that, our students are going to have exposure to K through 8 computer science in the early grades, and computer science in high school will become a graduation requirement within five years. So Chicago is the first major school district to take on K through 12 computer science education. We launched this past year in our first cohort of schools. We have 46 schools serving over 15,000 students in K through 12 learning computer science, many for the first time. With that, we trained 200 teachers who are coming from different specialties, their math, their <coughs> science, some of them are physical education teachers, but they understand the importance of computer science and they went through very rigorous professional development to come back and lead these courses for their students in this first year. The goal of Computer Science for All, like I said, is to have computer science gra be a graduation requirement within uh, three years and also to offer up um, AP computer science and increase the number of young women and minorities in, in, engaged in computer science. This year in Chicago Public Schools, we were able to bring on six additional schools who are now offering AP computer science courses in their public schools. So one of the things that we've done to help both launch the initiative and also spark interest in our students is introduce them to the Hour of Code. So next week is Computer Science Education Week. And this is where students all across the world are going to have the opportunity to explore computer science, whether for the first time or dive a little deeper, by participating in an hour of code. Through this, we've partnered with Microsoft, we've partnered with Code.org to offer these tutorials to our students that allow them to learn entry-level <coughs> JavaScript, to allow them to understand and demystify the world of computer science so that they know it's not something that someone does in a back room at Google. It's something that any and everyone can do. So far, as of this morning, we have had, we've got 60,000 students and over 260 school sites in Chicago alone registered to participate in the Hour of Code next week. These range, these are just public school sites and we also have library sites and nonprofit partners and corporate partners who are going to be hosting Hour of Code events for students all across the city. Last year, Chicago sat atop the leaderboard for the entire week of Hour of Code and well beyond. So we had more students coding and learning code for the first time than any other city across the world. So this year, we not only want to stay atop the leaderboard, we want to make sure that all of our students are getting exposed to this and have the opportunity to fully engage and start to dive deeper into computer science. So this brings me to you. <laughs> I know you've all been sitting here like, oh, this sounds fantastic. So what does that have to do with me? One of the great things about the Hour of Code is that it's not only an opportunity for students to learn, it's an opportunity for us to engage with the next generation and help give them that introduction to something that we know and love. We're going to have several opportunities across the next week to connect you and professionals like yourselves to students around the city who have never explored computer science and you'd have the opportunity to help facilitate or help coach students through an hour of code. And we're going to be using code.org tutorials, tutorials from the Microsoft website, and pretty much anyone who's developed something, uh, whether it's codable, all of our schools have different tools that they're really excited about, but this is an opportunity for you to go in and pick it up and help introduce a student to something that you love. What I've listed up here are several of the school sites who specifically requested that we bring them volunteers and also library branches that are across the city that are opening their doors to students to host an hour of code. And these are all going to be opportunities for you to go into the schools or go into the libraries and engage with groups of students from our public schools and help them learn a little bit more about the world of computer science. 
What I'd like to do after the end of this session is actually pass out. Um, we're going to go old school and pass out a, <laughs> a sign-in sheet because we have over 260 opportunities and we want to make sure that you are going to be matched with the one that best fits your, your location and that best fits the time that you're available, the days that you're available to work. So we're going to be passing around those sheets after the session. But this overall is our code. We're hoping to continue to keep Chicago atop the leaderboard, but more importantly than that, we're hoping to give our students new skills and an opportunity to be exposed to a skill set that they didn't think or know that they had. So with that, I'd like to open up the floor for questions. Do you have questions about the Computer Science Education Week, Hour of Code, or any of the locations that we have? So when you talk about, first of all, I just want to say thank you for coming to this space. Uh, I'm just, just going to jump to my Thank question, you guys for having I me. Just, I think this is really great and exciting. Um, and I definitely want to give at least an hour, I guess, that's not what you're asking for. Um, so I guess my question is around um, when you talk about like the computer science education requirement, what does that really mean? Does it mean that you will like have more of a, a theory-based sort of curriculum or will it be more like application-based? Like is the goal to develop an app at the end of the, at the end of your high school career? Like what, what does that look like? I know that may be a huge question. It's a great question and the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the graduation requirement will be our Exploring Computer Science course which is our introductory computer science course. It was developed in, with UCLA, some researchers from UCLA in conjunction with LA Unified School District. And we've been, it's endorsed by the Computer Science Teachers Association. So we've, what it does is give students a more holistic look into computer science. So they get to explore human computer interaction, they get to explore gaming, HTML. There's also some, some project base. So it gives them a little taste of the different facets of computer science so that from there they can choose whether or not they'd like to continue and go into the AP computer science course which is called computer science principles. Mm -hmm. So what it will do is just give everyone the, the math 101 version of computer science. It'll give you that introductory uh, introduction to the things that you need to know at least exist and you'll have a chance to try them. Great question, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For the hour of code, if we came to volunteer, is there uh, some kind of curriculum that we'd be working from or through, or how, how does that actually get structured? Absolutely. So for the hour of code, we want to make it as turnkey as possible. And what we have here are these tutorials that are on code.org forward slash learn. And they're some of the easiest accessible tutorials. And what they do are consist of about 20 different modules that take roughly 45 minutes to an hour to walk through. And what we'd ask as a volunteer is that you take the time to either on your lunch break or some other available time to walk through the tutorials just to get an understanding of what they are. A lot of the tutorials, the basic ones, use Blockly as a programming language, so it's simple drag and drop. So a lot of the things that you know we wish we had as our building blocks you know, 10 years ago when we were interested. And so you can kind of peruse and figure out you know, which tutorials would be best suited for you. And with that, we'll be able to match you with which schools you want to work with. How are most schools implementing the hour code? Is it students who are already in computer science classes? Are other teachers doing it? Is it after school? Yeah, it's it's a little bit of all of the above, but the majority of our schools are actually opting for whole school implementation. So not so for example, only twenty four elementary schools offer computer science right now as a part of the computer science for all initiative, but we have somewhere around 100 elementary schools that are going to be offering the Hour of Code. So none of the students have a prior experience with Hour of Code. So the students, the teachers are going to be either their regular classroom teachers, technology teachers, and it's scaffolded out throughout the week so that each student in the school has an opportunity to participate. Um, is there a math prerequisite? Um, and I guess a di slightly different question, what type of investments are being made to either bring computers or hardware to school? Uh, to enable like children who don't have access to computers in their home to be able to like really keep up with it. Great question. So, and this is again referring to the high school graduation requirement? Yeah. Yeah. So there isn't a math or a math prerequisite for the computer science course. Um, you know, a lot of the basics that it covers will, you know, have the students will have that baseline coming out of eighth grade and into uh, their freshman year and the majority of the schools in computer science for all are offering it as their sophomore year course. So there isn't a math prerequisite. Um, as far as infrastructure goes, we try to work with, as a team, we work with our schools to make sure that they, one, have the infrastructure technology that they would need and you know, the infrastructure around it, the bandwidth, et cetera, to operate the program. And we're working, we have a lot of 
fantastic teachers who are willing and able to stay a little bit later you know, after school if they're working with students on their homework or if they need additional time and tutoring. So that's one of the ways that we work around you know, making sure if students don't have the technology in their home that they still have access to you know, technology to actually complete the tutorials. Uh, if we sign up today, or actually when we all sign up today, <laughs> are we going to be, are gonna be um, are, will you put us in touch with the teacher ahead of time so we can ask them questions, talk to them, and I don't know, so that's, you know, just so we're like, hey, I'm a random person in your school. Absolutely, and that's why we're going for the, the old school sign up sheet. That way we can play a bit more of a matchmaker and connect you directly to the teachers and the people who are coordinating on the ground so that you can speak directly to them and know where you need to be on that day. Any other questions? Anyone wants to know how tall I am? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, one more. Actually, my area of specialization is in education. What kind of opportunities are there for someone who does not know how to help? Yeah, that's a great question. What type of opportunities would you feel you'd be best suited I, for? I do marketing and PR for schools, for public school systems. School systems. Districts. Interesting. I think this would be a bit off the beaten path, but if you, okay. I think we have a. If you if you go to that code.org slash word, you're going to see that some of the some of the coding languages aren't really languages at all. Um, it, it's something that you literally could pick up sitting down with it for maybe 45 minutes, um, and then adding to that your your marketing background, mm -hmm. um, talk to them about design, talk to them about what mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. what makes design. things stand out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was pretty much what I was going to say. I, I don't have a computer science background, and I've been able to go through the right. tutorials and really understand them. But also, as a Marcom professional, you'd be able to kind of segue this into, you know, what it's like to build a site using WordPress, because those are the things that you okay. manage. Right. What's a real-world application for, you know, this, this programming language, even if you don't want to be a programmer? And there's nothing on the site that says that only children are allowed to learn. So this is an opportunity. Like honestly, like the best way to like to to actually be a, like a good the best way to learn things on your own is actually to have to go through the process. To, like man, I gotta teach this to someone else. I better learn it, right? Yes. And like that's oftentimes when it's, it's fresh in your mind, it's easier to explain to someone else because if it's something that you've known for ten years, things just sort of come. Yeah. Like, you take it for granted, right? Oh, right. Of course, you didn't know that. Well, I forgot that I didn't know. I right. do community <laughs> relations and um, for public schools, so this is actually the first time I've ever met someone who is pro FOIA. This is new for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're usually shut it down. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> no, no, I mean. Yeah, no, that was a, a fantastic question. Okay. And you know, like Derek said, it's one of those things where I had never really experienced it, and I was like, okay, let me figure out what this really is before we yes. dive into it. So. You know, if I'm working with students, I really understand it. Mm -hmm. And next thing I knew, half my workday was gone, and I had to stay a little later to get the things accomplished because I just went through, you know, a tutorial after tutorial, and it was just really fun. I didn't think it was, my preconceived notion was that it was going to be more complex, and I needed some sort of background mm -hmm. to really understand it. So for to be able to debunk that as an adult, you know, it's really powerful to go back and say and debunk that, that same myth for a sixth, year, sixth grader who still has the opportunity to, you know, choose this as a path. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, fantastic. Thank awesome. you guys for having me. And uh, we'll be passing around the time. Thank you for your time. Look forward to working with you all. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Uh, cool. So, uh, awesome. So, we're um, moving on in the agenda here. Yeah. Where is the old. Hold on. Where's like the menu for getting. Ha! Alt tab. I have power.